Welcome learners. We are going to see and appreciate some paintings of Ajanta. Ajanta painters, as I have told you, is the creation of the Buddhist monks. So naturally, all the paintings were related to Buddhism or stories of Buddha. Since Buddhism believed very much in life after death and the main idea of Buddhism to do good in your life. That means you follow Dharma, Sangha and Buddha. Buddha himself was born so many times before he was born as Siddhartha. Only after doing good things in the previous lives, he became Siddhartha and later by meditation he achieved enlightenment or bodhi and became Buddha. Prince Siddhartha enjoyed life as all princes do. According to our stories of Buddha's life, he enjoyed life in full but one day he went out of his palace and saw the misery of human being in form of death, old age, disease, etc. Then he realized the life is nothing but suffering. So the important idea of Buddhism not to born again to suffer. If you follow the Triratna of Buddhism, ultimately you are not supposed to be born again and that will be the end of your suffering in all previous life and earlier lives. The Jataka stories, actually the stories of lives Buddha had in previous births. There are so many stories where he was born as a deer, an elephant, monkey, etc. and etc. These stories actually a kind of sermons which taught the faithful that what to do in their own life. So through Jataka stories we learn so many things and these were illustrated by the painters of Ajanta. This is one part of themes of Ajanta. Other part is life of Siddhartha, that how he spent his days in luxury in the palace. So the enjoyment of entertainment and other things are expressed in these paintings. And the third one is the secular life, the everyday life of even common men. So Ajanta painters observed life from every angle, from the common life of common men, the royal life of the kings and princes, and also the spiritual life of the saints like Buddha. And the fables like Jataka stories to enlighten the common people with these stories. Now we will first come to one of the very famous paintings of Ajanta that is we called Padmapani Bodhisattva. Padmapani Bodhisattva is a wonderful work that is in the cave number one. The painting is already have told you in tempera. It is placed in one corner of the left wall of the Bihara. It is quite a, in big size, five feet by nine and a half inches. And the figure is a little bit tilted and the figure of Padmapani Bodhisvatta as the name suggests, holding a blue 
lotus in his hand. He wears a pearl necklace and with a sapphire locket. The artist has used the local color for the other part of the necklace and lapis lazuli for this necklace. He is holding this blue lotus very, very elegantly. The forms are perfect and face is also bright, but both the eyes are downcast. The spiritual quality is very clear on the expression of the face. The very restricted use of ornamentation and the spiritual expression through half-closed eyes or downcast eyes are the main important features of this particular painting. Bodhisattva Avalokiteshwar, another very beautiful painting in the same cave number one. This is almost a replica of Padmapani of Bodhisattva in respect of its posture and also its style. The figure is over ornamented, which is very, very irregular thing for Ajanta painting. The lot of jewelry you can see, the upper crown or the headgear is also too much ornamented and also the tilt is a bit exaggerated the movement that did not actually help the spiritual quality of the painting itself. So in the same area, in the same cave, we see two qualities of painting by the painters of Ajanta. One is the Padmapani Bodhisattva, and other one is the Avalokiteshvara. Now, I will show you a drawing of the famous painting, Mother and Child. Here stands Buddha. He came back just after his sannyas or attaining enlightenment or bodhi. When his wife wanted to meet him along with her child, Buddha agreed. And this scene has been depicted by the Ajanta painters. Note, the figure of Buddha is much, much bigger than the figure of his wife and child. And also notice the expression of Buddha in contrast to the expressions on the face of his wife and child. Buddha by this time had attained bodhi. So he was no more a normal human being. His status much bigger than any other human. So Buddha is here shown in a very large size along with a halo on the back of his head. He met his family undoubtedly, but his attitude is completely indifferent. On the contrary, the begging form of the wife and the child is clearly depicted and expressed by the Ajanta painter here. The expressions on the face of wife and the child is very, very pensive and Buddha is standing in front of them without any emotion shown on his face. Next we will see that how Jataka stories are expressed by the Ajanta painters. Shardanta Jatak is a very popular form of Jataka stories that 
has been used so many times by Buddhist painters, not only in Ajanta, in other places also. Buddha was born as an elephant in his earlier birth as an elephant with six tasks. He was married to two she elephants. And one day, when they are roaming in the jungle, somehow he hit one of the trees in the jungle. The beehives was broken in that shaking, and the bees actually attacked one of his wife, who died on the spot. His wife was again born as the queen of Benares, and she wanted to avenge his death in earlier birth. This is the line drawing of that particular uh, story of Shardanta Jataka. Ajanta painters were equally good in drawing the animal figures. Here is one example how they use the drawing of an elephant for the motif of their designing. Their composition of designs will enable motif like elephant, deer, swan, bird is worth noticing. So their use of elephant figure as you have seen here, they are given a plasticity or the volume with shades, which is very difficult thing to achieve in tempera. On the other hand, in this painting of Saradanta Jataka, the form of the elephant has been brought in terms of lines. The linear quality was given always emphasis in the Ajanta paintings, but it doesn't mean that they were not aware of painting without even line giving the volume to the other forms in both human figure and animal figure. They see the proportion of the elephants, which is perfectly done. The bigger one with the sardant elephant, which has six tasks, and his wife in the smaller size here, we can see. The combination and the placement of the vegetations like trees and other shrubs and plants are beautifully composed in this particular work that is called Shardat Chataka. So far we have seen how Ajanta painters handled the Buddha's life and the Jataka stories. Now we will see how they have treated the palace life or the royal court life of the princes and the kings. Here you can see a beautiful work from cave number 6. Here the figures of some women. They belong to the royal family. Their expressions are highly exaggerated. Their eyebrows are up, the drooling eyes combined with beautiful skin colors and lot of jewelries are put on their bodies and heads. The artist capture the different characteristics of women in this particular painting. Eyebrows and the eyes particularly follow the dictum of Shilpa Shastra. So for the court scenes, we will see another beautiful work. There is another aspect of the court life which is full of amusement and entertainment. The dancers are practicing their dance poses before they appear in front of the kings or the 
princes. The group is few musicians and surrounded the dancer in the middle. The dance pose is typical of Indian classical dance pose and all the instrument they are playing is typically Indian like flutes, drums, etc. Here one thing to be noticed which is very interesting, the use of perspective. Ajanta never used normal perspective because they believed it is more important to give emphasis to the subject or to the figure rather than the perspective of that reducing in the background. So sometimes they use contra perspective which means things bigger in the background and smaller in the front. Here you can see the roof of the palace is smaller in size to accommodate all the figures here. If they had used the normal perspective then this building wall would disturb the whole figures. So they preferred to ignore that normal perspective in place of the contra perspective. They did not forget to use the tragedy that very often happens even in the royal life. Actually the monks wanted to say that this kind of life, what, what we called mundane life doesn't last long. There are always some tragedies in between this flow of life. Here you see a princess is dying, is very famous, world famous as dying princess. The dark complexion of the princess has two reasons. One, the ethnic complexion of the Indian people is one of the reasons to use this color and another reason is to show the negative quality of the theme. The tragic end of the princess is beautifully expressed in this painting as she is attended by her friends in this particular moment. She is dying but still she is courageous. She is not dying lying. She is in a reclining position. So this painting also saying that there is nothing wrong in the death because you are supposed to born again in some form. The painters of Ajanta were monks but they were very aware of the common life. Very often they had to move to the urban areas to have amps on which they used to live. Once in a day they used to go out and then came back in the afternoon and have their food. During this visit to the urban areas or the cities or towns, they keenly noticed the life of the common people, which they added as subjects in their paintings. Here is one such example. We can see the life of a couple which is expressed in this particular painting. The lovers are sitting on the bed here and the skin color of these couples are not same. One is dark and other is fair. Perspective is here also very interesting. It is a bedroom scene but the walls are removed to make the visual clear.
This is a technique very often used by the Ajanta painters. One more interesting thing you will see there is a kind of co comic sense of the artist. A lady is peeping through the window to the couple. Their sense of comic was very much interesting. In another painting, we will see that how a young boy is trying to steal the bananas from the behind of the banana sellers. So this kind of mixture of tragedy, comedy, common life, everything we see in the works of Ajanta painters. Their studies of human faces is quite interesting. They took different kind of models, young ladies, robust, healthy, gentlemen, but in the same time they studied the old people with equal interest. Here is a linear drawing of an old man. He stands supporting a stick on his both hands and his expression is quite pensive as he is almost at the end of his life. This is most probably a monk in the Bihara which became the model for the artist. Indian artists never followed the restriction of normal expression of human figure. For them it was more important to capture the expression of the body language. Here is a figure of a worshipper. In typical in Indian pose, she is submitting in front of her deity. The posture is though unusual and unreal, but rhythm give her total submission to the God. So artists main interest here not to capture the real figurative quality in this posture, but the submission is or her ultimate aim to submit to her God. Learners, so we have seen some of the beautiful masterpieces of Ajanta paintings. I hope you will also ap appreciate and have learned how to appreciate a work of art. Thank you for listening.